So thank you both for the invitation. I'm very, very happy to see you again. And even if it's now maybe 15 years back, it feels like just yesterday. So of course we are also here today to speak about your book. And I've prepared some questions, but I would like to start with a question. question. Uh, I'm very much interested uh, what is moving you personally right now in your life as human beings, what you would like to talk about. I'm very interested to hear what Deva has to say. <laughs> <coughs> it's always love. It's always love. <coughs> it's never been any different. And, uh, and I feel deep down that's really why I chose, which was not even so much of a conscious choice, but that's why I chose to live this life of traveling, singing, chanting in community. You know, I haven't chosen a life of, uh, in, of being in an ashram where I'm secluded and, and a renunciate or in isolation or, you know, I've chosen a life which is very inclusive and, and, and based on community. And that's, and the singing and the chanting enhances that community because we are all contributing to this together. We are all equal parts, you know, we are all singing our song, contributing our voice to the, to the mix. And uh, it's love, that's the motivation and the nourishing. It's, nourishing the, it's the affirmation mm. also, you know, the, the, the feeling that, uh, that it's circular and, and that's a motivation in itself. You don't feel isolated, you feel connected, that's how it feels for us in this music. And it's, f for me, the, it's true, it's love. And where I, 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 I experienced a di different kind of love when I met my guru, because that was a totally life-changing moment for me. Before then, my idea of love was the love that I had towards my son or my family or my friends, physicality, you know, like you could touch that love. But to love somebody that you never touched and to be moved and inspired to a point where you feel a depth of love that was so uh, profound that it changed your life. And so that's where the music was born. It was born from a deep, uh, uh, a deep acceptance of, of, of myself, and I know David feels the same, and that's where the music and the mantras have to be accessed from that point. You can't perform, if you perform anything in that way, then it destroys, it destroys it, destroys the love in a way. So, love, good. No, I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> it makes me happy. <laughs> so, what is love? What you? is love? Yeah. It's inescapable. There is no outside of love. Everything for me is encapsulated in, in what we call love, L-O-V-E. It's a state that we all actually live in why we're in the human body. That's how I see it. And we express it in different ways. Even through violence and aggression, it's, it's, the, 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 it's still an ex a weird, twisted expression of, of passion and, uh, and, and, lo and longing for connection, the connection um, to love, to reality. What do you say? Yeah, love. Um, love is connection. 
I feel. Because we, when we feel connected, we are basically happy. You know, even if, even if there is sadness or turmoil, if deep down we feel connected, we feel somehow safe or we feel taken care of or we don't feel alone. And that connection doesn't mean it's a physical connection to somebody. It's a connection, you know, it could be a connection to the, to the divine or to God or whatever we, we feel we want to call it the, the divine in our lives. But I feel that's what we all long for. We all want connection, you know, we all want also, we want actually a certain form of attachment even. I think humans really like attachment and that gives us some, some meaning and some juice, you know. And so love is, is when we are in love, we feel connection. And uh, like I said, it can be to anything. It can be a physical uh, being or it can be the divine. But if we feel it strongly, we are nourished. We are, we are in love and we are nourished. So, Mitem, you said um, even the dark sides of human race are kind of twisted expression of love. So, you come around a lot. So, do you feel that uh, singing and uh, especially singing of mantras can help mankind in this in these days? It's one step at a time. You know, I remember once we were playing in Kiev in the Ukraine and um, uh, we were invited to be in a, a, a in a gathering with some Ukrainian politicians UN uh, from the UN and they were interested in and they asked that question and I remember uh, he was saying you know what about how do I take a mantra out there to that east wall where it was all happening and and, uh, you know, it's not, it's a funny thing, but it has to, the mantra, the only way it, 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 it has to, like we all know, inner peace begins within, within <laughs> you know, and that's the, that's the power of the mantra. It's that it requires a commitment to come towards it and to actually experience it that's where the that's where the peace is but uh, but if 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 you adopt a mantra if you feel the mantra if you accept it something happens to your physiology and your world and so we call that peace and that is the only that's the light that's the candle and um, uh, so that's all we have, you know. It's not that that I I, I feel like mantras are going to change the world. We just played to some people, enlightened people in America, who were carers of uh, autistic kids. It was a huge uh, uh, facility, and even those people, they didn't know about mantras. The carers, they were a bit like. You know, they're American and they were like, what's this? You know, they were more Christian kind of thing. So, so you know, it's not that, and, um, and by the end of the evening, we'd all moved into a different place. We'd all moved, you could feel it. And the, the people came and said, wow, you know, this, it, I needed something like this. I'd never experienced something like this. And I knew, I felt it, but I didn't know where to go for it. And that's how the mantras can, can move through the world. And, and that's why, whether we're in Bill de Frau or, or wherever, it doesn't make any difference to us. It's just a, a case of, of the mantras uh, requiring to be felt at this time. They're an energy, they're spirits, they're not just dead things, you know. So, uh, so they, they, through us, they can be maybe held or heard by other people and that's our job. That's our feeling, uh, that's how we see ourselves as messengers. And also, it's the, the mantras and meditation, basically, that's the way I see it, is that they the reason why we meditate and why we sing mantras is to get in touch with our essential nature, which is 
obviously non-physical. And, and I often feel the mantras are a shortcut to that silence where we experience ourselves as a, as a vast silence, as a non-physical um, being. And, and then, of course, the, the idea of death is not quite as scary when you realize you're not the body anyway. And um, so in that way, I think uh, it makes us more, obviously, much more settled within and much more fearless. And, uh, and uh, and then obviously also more peaceful, and then of course the world changes when more and more of us feel peaceful. Mm-hmm. But it's that fear that it's so that such a human condition that's so strong in most of us. I mean, I I know it's in me also, and uh, and when we can realize more and more of our eternal nature and be more and more at peace with death. Then, uh, then the world would change a lot. Mm. Yeah, because uh, that's that's what's driving. No, the world is the f- is fear. Is uh, yeah. that's what makes the world go around exactly the way it does. Mm. So, if somebody doesn't know anything about mantras, uh, probably thinks, "Oh, it's coming from India. It has something to do with strange gods." Do I have to be religious? to to sing a mantra or maybe is it even a problem when i'm a christian you know to sing a mantra in sanskrit that's the beautiful thing about mantras that they are they are medicine you know they are like medicine in sound and uh, just like when you take aspirin you don't have to believe in aspirin you don't have to be a doctor to know what's inside it and why you why it works you don't have to understand all that you just take it and it works and uh, it's the same with the mantras these are very ancient sounds that have been received by extremely sensitive beings who devoted their whole lives to meditation and they've received these sounds that then they translated into a human way of repeating them, of making them in, in, with our, with what we have, with our tool of the that, body. That was the scientific. That's part. the scientific part, and then and then now we can <clears throat> we can use these sounds, and of course then humans come in and they like to make concepts out of it, and they like to make a religion out of it, and also you know the gods are such a beautiful and playful. A human way to get closer to the mantras because when we then we see oh yeah the remover of obstacles Ganesh oh he looks he's an elephant he has a big belly and he has a he has one tusk is only half and all these little and, details and, and I make up I, I make, make up <laughs> you know just for the humor also it's also important and uh, and then something deep within realize uh, recognizes that uh, it's like an archetype, you know, it's a kind of a playful, childlike, very direct way of experiencing the nature and the essence and the quality of Ganesh. And of course we can get hung up on it and say, oh God, I don't want to believe in, a, in an elephant god, how stupid is that, you know? Yes. And I have been there, you know, I felt like that. Yeah. I felt like, oh, I can't, it's just so childlike, you know? But now I realize, yes, it is childlike, and that's why it is perfect, you know, it's, it's innocent and it's direct. And if it helps us, we can use it. If it doesn't help us, then just focus on the, on the sounds and see what happens, you know, try it out and see, do you feel mm-hmm. better chanting? You know, it's like, do I feel better when I take aspirin? No, I mean, aspirin is pretty funny, <laughs> but, uh, you know, like, you know, so, uh-huh. so it's it's really about experiencing it. It's not about believing in it. It's really yeah. like doing yeah. it and applying yourself to it, and then. Uh-huh. It's it is scientific. You know, I mean, these whoever they were back then, they were experimenting with how sound affects us. You know, and uh, and then refining that knowledge until it becomes very crystallized. Even they know how many time, how many cycles you have to chant this sound before it starts to resonate. They even got it down to that. You know, very scientific uh, uh, work, and 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 uh, that I relate on that level. You know, because I know that sound is so powerful. 
we all know that. You know, so, um, yeah. So what does the mantra exactly do? Well, um, the, the, for me, one of the biggest things that they do is to seduce you to make a commitment in your life. Because not many of us do that. Not many of us say to, to, to ourselves, I will meditate for 21 days. Uh, you know, it, it's, 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 we have a busy life. And uh, for me, the mantras offer the possibility to make a commitment in your life to say, uh, okay, okay, I will make a scientific exploration. I'm interested. So first thing you do, you look, once you had to go to India to get a mantra, and then maybe the master would whisper in your ear, your mantra. Now you can Google a mantra. Now you can buy David Pramalami 10 mantra book. So there's mantras are much more accessible now. So first step is look to see does which what what what's in my life, you know? Do I want more? Am I too tense? Do I need some sense of inner peace? <sighs> there's a mantra for that. Is it that I'm fed up with always having to push, push, push in my life? I would like to have a clear run. There's a mantra for that. So you look and you say, okay, I, I will, I will, okay, this is the mantra that I feel drawn to. The sounds are, are whatever they are. In the, in the case we are talking about, Om Shanti Om, is a mantra that brings a sense of inner peace. And, and they're not words, they're actual sounds. If you focus on the fact that they're energetic spiritual beings, then you're into a whole other game, you know. It's a different relationship. So you, you say, okay, I will take this mantra and every night before I go to sleep, I will chant with Deva, with the CD. She has a CD where she chants 108 cycles. No music, just Deva and me. And I chant with her 108 cycles every night. And I will do it for 21 days, I promise. So that, that in itself moves you away from whatever it is that's holding you back on a spiritual level. That moment is the mantra saying, come. And that's, that in itself is a huge thing. Yeah, and then it, it tunes us, then, uh, because you repeat it. The repetition is necessary because it's like a... Um, in German we say, steter Tropfen hüllt den Stein. Mm. You know, it's like, you, like the, the waves wash up on the shore and the pebbles get more and more smooth. So it's a constant tuning of your inner... inner world and uh, we are so we are we are made up of of frequency and we're made up of water and we're made up of all these things that are very susceptible to to sound so by by sounding our body and actually that's where it's really beautiful if we do them out loud also because that also creates so much vibration in all the cells then we are tuning our body to that particular energy of the mantra and each syllable, each part of the mantra has a certain, you know, um, very specific uh, effect on a certain body part, on a certain emotional, subtle body part, you know. And I personally, I don't feel those subtle things, you know, I can't, I, it, I'm not that kind of sensitive person. So all I can say is when I chant and when, when we sing, it makes me basically very happy, you know, and uh, and also makes me feel very vibrant inside. I feel alive and I feel the silence comes so naturally and it's so effortless, you know, I don't have to do anything. It just wants to be there, the silence, and it's bigger than me and bigger than the thoughts. And, and that's, I trust that, you know, and I love it, you know, that's what I want to experience, you know. So I, we don't have to get um, hung up about being, at least I have to tell myself that because I feel like, oh God, you don't feel all those subtle things. But um, 
the good thing is I do feel silence and it makes me happy and then that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's communal also, uh -huh. mm. you know, and like it's not something you, you have to sing, you know, you don't have to be Pavarotti, mm. you know. <laughs> It's uh, right. Om Shanti, Om, Om Shanti, Om. You know, there's two notes, that's it, you know. So uh, that's, another, that's another way of, 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 of uh, you know, of taking ourselves beyond the social. When we chant, we're, it's not a social thing where we sing, it's something underneath. And that means that you in a community, even if you're sitting in your room alone, you have a, you have a, a network of people uh, who are who you know you can sit with your friend who's in America and chant without even you know being on the phone, and something resonates. It's 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 uh, energetic, so it's like it's kind of Wi-Fi. It's kind of Wi-Fi, yeah. I would like to speak about a uh, special mantra about the Gaia tree. I was very touched when I read your story of the Gaia tree mantra. Because maybe 12 years ago, when our, sta our work started to grow, I felt uh, I really was never into mantras, but I, uh, started f I had this longing for protection, you know. I felt I, I don't want to mess up our work, I want to keep it clean. So, And suddenly there was this Gaia tree mantra, and I. I had to put it on my body like a tattoo and sing it and sing it and sing it and uh, so I was very touched when I read your story. So what is the uh, exactly meaning of, s of this mantra mm -hmm. for you? Mm -hmm. For me the meaning is actually just a feeling of being home and uh, swimming in it somehow. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's a beautiful meaning because it's um, it's so universal and it just really invokes the light and that's what I love because the light is so universal. It shines on everything, everybody, everybody on the planet relates to light. Um, there's, it's really beyond all even concepts of gods and deities and form and uh, it's, it's, it's everything, you know, light is everything, it's like space. So it invokes the light. It says we, we meditate upon this, this adorable and enchanting source of all things. So we meditate upon the divine. You know, that's, we all, I think we all basically, actually maybe not all of us, but most of us <laughs> can relate to a divine, uh, divine power or divine force that we med meditate upon and then it says this divine light of, of pure consciousness is, is what it awakens us and inspires us and gives us energy. So um, it's a mantra that actually, like I said, where, where every syllable has a certain effect on a certain body part or chakra, energy center. With the Gayatri mantra it's a very th th thorough whole experience where every chakra is uh, stimulated and where it's purified. And uh, I'm just happy that my father gave this to me when I was, even before I was born during the pregnancy and then, and then uh, coming to me every night, e either him or my mom and singing it with me, you know, and it's like right here in this flat there and, and uh, Om Bhu Bhuva Svata Tsavitur Varinyam Bhargo Divas Yadhimai Diyo Yuna Prachodayat Do it three times every night. And then, uh, and then personally I would uh, say Satchit Ananda, Satchit Ananda, Satchit Ananda afterwards, which would be uh, consciousness, truth, consciousness and bliss. That was kind of my personal mantra because the Gayatri mantra was my sister also and my brother also. So um, I, of course, had no idea what it all, all was, but um, now I'm really grateful and, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, I'm swimming. Mm -hmm. Your family had also um, a Christian background mm -hmm. by, by your father. Uh, so it, it's 
I really would would like to invite everybody who's uh, who's watching this interview if if he's uh, an atheistic or, or a Christian Buddhist or something else to to try mantra. Mm -hmm. So there is no conflict. Absolutely not. No. It's 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 like water without taste. You know, it's just pure and uh, and it's it's uh, there for us to drink. You know, and. Uh, like Miten songs, you know, for example, they are they are often he has Osho in his songs, you know, the word Osho because it's our spiritual guru is Osho, and we've had people who are Christian come and say, yeah, for me it's just you know Jesus when you sing it, you know, like so it is, it is really what you focus on and what form you want to give it to, give it and what helps you, what imagination helps you to feel that connection is nothing wrong with it, whatever that is, whatever uh, whatever you want to focus on. And the same with the Gayatri Mantra, if the light if the light is too vast a concept, you know, if you focus on on even on your on your um, loved ones or your dog or your children, whatever you can wherever you can feel that divine mm -hmm. connection and then take it from there and uh, and uh, experience it and let it go bigger and and uh, light up every basically every corner of, of, of the being it's it's uh, I see it as indigenous you know mm. it's uh, it's predates Hinduism mm. and mantras they're 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 sh shamanistic mm. actually you know, and that's how I feel their energy, like shamanistic, and they challenge us, of course, and they they encourage us to step a little closer to ourselves, a little further out of our comfort zone, meaning a little closer to who we really are, and. and and the guy tree is, is obviously the most powerful. D David's father used to walk around the walls of Nuremberg at 2 a.m. in the morning, chanting his mantra. 2 a.m.? Yeah, wasn't it 2 a.m.? For how long? Four hours. Four hours, every day. You know, he, what kind of energy he was giving back to, we were talking about Nuremberg earlier, by doing this is incredible. And giving his daughter the Gayatri Mantra, so that she could go out into the world. I mean, I'm sure he didn't think of it in those terms, but to cosmic on a cosmic level that he gave his daughter this peace, this this uh, this um, gift of light mm. that she could, she was destined to go out into the world, and and actually heal people because of what he saw in his own young life, you know. So it's a, it's an amazing story for me to come in on it and be in Nuremberg and with David's family. It's amazing, it's especially amazing. in Nuremberg. I guess so. Yeah, there is a power spot, and it's definitely something. Yeah, I would like to speak about the difference between singing mantras and bringing through mantras it into the room. I have to admit, when I was invited to your first concert, I thought, oh. It will be boring, you know. To <laughs> to, you know, I'm more like a movie guy, and I thought, okay, one or two hours, just <laughs> sitting, singing mantras, <laughs> it will be so boring, you know. And then after ten minutes, I was just in the field, you know. And and I'm always interesting because I teach performance on the stage, even if you cannot teach it really. So what's the magic? The magic is yeah. not to perform. Mm -hmm. Simple. You know, when we began, we, I inwardly promised myself, I mean, I would not perform. If people didn't like what we did and who we are, well, you know, as a musician, I know there's even people that don't like Stevie Wonder, you know, and Stevie Wonder's a genius. So, you know, uh, you know, so I really felt, no, I did that before when I was in the music business, I performed. This is going to be real and true. 
David didn't even need to have that thought because she'd never sung in any place other than in an ashram, you know, publicly. Of course, she sang to herself, but, but she never sang in a rock club or a disco or cabaret or theater, nothing like that. So she only knew the power of silence that can, that can uh, arise through music. We knew that, we learned that in the ashram. That's what touched you. It's the silence that's in there. It's, there's, no, there's no push. It's just a, an open invitation. And uh, that's, what we, that's what we were gifted. That's why we're so grateful to our teacher, our great spiritual guru, because he gave us access to that understanding, you know, that space. And it's again, it's intense. It's scary. You, 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 you're going into a realm where you, you, your every note and everything you're doing is for the moment and then gone. You know, it's really a, a momentary experience. So uh, there's no thought of oh, is this good? Is this not good? Do people like it? Do they people not like it? What's the chord he's playing? You know, all all the things you go through as musicians performing. There's none of that. And the mantras gave us that gift, just to, to be with friends like this, like with you guys, and just to play, and then see what. Let's see what happens, because every night is different for us. That's another part of the magic. Huh? Mm. Every night is different because every night it's different voices. We have another element to our music, and that is the people who come. And every night they sing in their own way, and they chant in their own way. And remember, we're all chanting in a language we don't understand. So it's not us singing in Italian or Spanish or Portuguese or German or something. Or it's not. It's it's a communal event. And uh, we complete a circle, a cosmic circle, when we come onto the stage with the musicians. And then the circle is complete, and then there's nobody looking at anybody else. That's how I feel the music and, and the way we play, and I think it's the same for you. You never have to deal with expectations mm. like, oh, yesterday it was so great, let's... If people don't like it, then I'm just leave. It's okay. I don't want to fulfill anybody's expectations. That's what I used to do as a musician. Mm -hmm. I tried to fulfill people's expectations, man. That's not a good place to be, you know. <laughs> you really have to just be who you are and share who you are the best you can. Mm -hmm. The best you can in every detail. Mm -hmm. You give God everything you have. You know, and uh, and then whatever happens with that is good. If Dave and I are in a plane crash tomorrow, if we got we used to had that in, um, not it's funny that it's 9/11 today, mm -hmm. because when it happened, we were booked to go to Japan right after our first visit to Japan, and people were saying you must not go, you must not go, and we said to each other, look. If we die going to share mantras, you know, so that's 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 the level in which we 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 connect. So it's all good. No expectations. No hope. No belief. <laughs> no dreams that brought me no relief. <laughs> yes. So we go on. <laughs> so you have no, no no plan on the stage. No, we we have a we have an energetic uh, vision mm -hmm. that we don't speak about. But I know, uh, especially Dave and I. But but the the musicians who like Minos Minos understands exactly what this is. I don't. I never had to tell Minos anything, mm -hmm. never. And that's really unusual when you bring other musicians in. The first time we met Manoz, he came to a recording session and he didn't know the piece and we gave him a microphone, but it had already been recorded and we just wanted him to play a little part. We didn't know him and uh, 
we gave him the track, he put his headphones on and he played from the beginning all the way through and I never changed one note. The first time he'd ever heard us, he'd never heard it before. You know, so... Uh, Maybe we should say, I don't know if everybody knows or knows, that he is our Nepali uh, flute maestro that we are so blessed and lucky to share our life with. Show the picture. And, uh, and he has come into our lives. We travel with him wherever we go with the, with the music. And uh, it's just such a blessing to... Yeah, yes. <laughs> Can you see it? <laughs> He's such an amazing being. So the program is uh, loose. We usually start with, we, we all know, uh, at least when we go on stage, we all know the first piece, but that could change when we get on the stage. <laughs> it's happened before. But usually the first two or three, we say, okay, this is the launch. And then we go into outer space and then we we see what happens. So this is also very much a play between both of you. Mm. So it's about making also love. Also mm. yeah. It's tantric. It's really tantric. It's like making love. It's just uh, an energetic, non-verbal flow. Mm. Mm. I think that's what is so healthy for us as a couple, to be in that flow and not sexually. Mm. Of course, that's another thing, but the the actual uh, making love feeling and is is there also in the music. That's why also we say you don't have to clap. You know, <laughs> it is, feels like we just made love and you cl clap yeah, after making love, it doesn't really almost quite... Almost hurting. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Just different. laughs> yeah. So I'm sure people want to know, y you look very, almost always very peaceful at the stage together, very harmonious. So how is it in your daily life? In the life? real life. You, in, What's in the, the real, real life? life if you we fight all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Always fight, you know. No, and then when people come, we smile. And we I mean, I know couples like this. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, really, yes. Yeah. No, we're not like that. I don't know. It's just been, I mean, we're literally always together. Mm -hmm. Like, basically, always in the same room. Yeah. And... Uh, I think maybe we have two weeks apart in the year and um, it's just always easy. I mean, we just, you know, we have sometimes disagreement which lasts for five minutes or something, but it's literally five minutes. Wow. It's like, a, it's, and we are passionate beings, you know, but uh, it doesn't manifest in fights like that. And, and there's no there's no uh, explanation. It just is like that. It was always like that from the beginning. Yeah. And uh, we can't say, oh, just do like that and then, then this happens. Oh, you know, we just, did this and we yeah, did that. We never worked on anything. We never did a couple session or a, it's just luck. <laughs> it's just pure luck. <laughs> mm. I think it was more than just luck. I don't know. I do. I think destiny is involved. Yeah, but that's luck. <laughs> destiny? Maybe. Yes. But I never expected it to last. That's definitely, I never, because growing up with my parents who separated when I was 10 or 11, uh, seeing so many couples around me splitting up, being with Osho who'd never, who never emphasized that you should be with somebody forever. It was never like the goal, you know. Mm -hmm. He said it's beautiful if it happens, but you know, the, the, the flower is also real and true if it lasts for a day. You know, if it blooms for a day, it's a, it's a beautiful rose and a beautiful experience. And so I never put this concept on love that it only is real if it lasts for a long time. Mm -hmm which I think also relaxed the situation a little bit. <laughs> you know, like, because I don't have that, you know, of course I really wanted to find a partner when I was 17, 18. I was really longing for a boyfriend and I was longing for, for somebody I could travel with and that I could work with. I thought these would be good things because then I could be with him all the time. And exactly like this it happened. <laughs> I didn't I didn't specify the age, but what to do? <laughs> but 
to be very careful what you wish for. But the age is the age really helped. <laughs> it helped me because I was so I was like forty three at the time. And you know, it was younger than I'm now, which is also funny. Yeah. And Deva was just out of her teens. She was twenty. And uh, so me looking at this young woman in an ashram in India, you know, in especially in an ashram in India that, that was so uh, focused on tantric experiment. Osho was very into moving sexual energy up to, to transform sexual energy. So there was uh, an environment that was absolutely conducive and supportive to me to say, wow, at last I found this uh, a, a young being that I obviously cannot put a wall around. There's no way you would want to put a wall around anybody there. So it gave me the chance to live uh, a deeper connection with a woman. Um, and, and it gave me at last, after all the 43 years, uh, an opportunity for me not to feel jealous, to actually be more expansive than jealousy. That was so good feeling. To watch her go with another guy if she wanted to go with another guy and just feel, oh wow, this is not what I've felt before, you know. I feel big and I feel and I feel loving. I feel I want the best for her. And uh, and I was in a place where I could live that. And and so it was a great it was a, just a great gift that she gave me. And uh, and for me um, I became friends, really deep friendship where you know to have a f a, a, a friend as a sexual partner is, as you know, is just the best, you know. So, so that's what we moved into. We moved into this, we had the chance because Osho, like David said, the flower could just bloom for one day. Let's be real, you know, let's keep it real. If I want to be with someone else, whatever, let's just see what happens. Let's not say, this is how it's done. You, you know, we know what a relationship is. This is what a relationship, it's been going through the ages forever. This is what my parents said. This is what my grandparents said. This is what it is. This is what my friends have, you know. And we say, okay, look, if we, and Osho's like, well, look, what about you look at it in a different way? What about you look at it in a different way and experiment? You know, it's, it's, you know, it's not, you're, you're not in Berlin, you're in an ashram in India where everybody is moving with this respect for each other and understanding that we're all misfits. We're all souls looking and searching and feeling where connection is, how, to gr how do I grow? And, and so the master is, a, is the, is the spirit that says, come, a little more. And then you get to a place and you feel like, wow, this is amazing. And then he says, come a little more. And then you, <sighs> you know, and that's the journey with the master. It's like seduction in a way. And it's only calling you into your own self. <laughs> that's the strange and funny, beautiful thing about it. The closer you move towards the master, it mean the closer you move into your inner master. So he, being with a master is, is a fantastic, for me, it, it opened everything for me. And that's why I say destiny, because why did I come to Osho in such a place where I didn't want to play music? I was a musician. No more music. And then uh, eventually music comes back to me like he gives it to me. Now you can play music clean. There was a moment when I picked up a guitar again. And then this young girl, later, much later, you know, who was, had been given mantras by her father and could sing, and could sing with me. And uh, without, it was never a career move. We weren't looking to make any money <laughs> chanting mantras, you know. It's not the way things go, you know. But it just kept on, uh, growing and we don't know you know it reminds me of that you know we just don't know how big it's going to get 
<laughs> it reminds me of a great joke. No, no, no. No, no, it's fine. It's you don't need to. You no. don't need to keep. It's a really funny joke. I have to tell him. What was the, f what was the first thing Adam said to Eve? He said, "Stand back. I don't know how big this thing is going to get." <laughs> And it's a bit like that with the music, and it's like we don't know. It's just opening, you know, and uh, we don't know. But we know that we are sitting here with you, and there's interest because the world needs something. The world needs something quick and very, very sure, you know, and. Um, and, and this is just our tiny little way of sharing with the world. We just do it as best we can, and that's where the beauty is, and that's where the redemption is, and that's where the affirmation is for each other. And uh, that's much bigger than our, our fights, which we really very rarely have. A fight, I think the last time we had a fight I can remember was in Australia when we were rehearsing about six years ago, <laughs> when you screamed into the microphone, do you remember, and scared my nose? I think that was a fight, the last time we had a really good fight. In front of people? No, no, no. no, no. no we were rehearsing. rehearsing. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, since then, you, you just live in the flow, or you don't have plans, no vision at all? I mean, of course we have plans, because we have bookings, yeah. and yeah. we have concerts. Yeah. Um, we so basically we just always book a year in advance because you have to and it feels good so we kind of know we know now what we like to do next year mm -hmm. and so far it's always been good when we've done it it felt good we didn't feel like oh god what were, what were we thinking it's like we we um like i said to andrea we know what a good flow is and how to book ourselves so it because some people say, oh my God, I looked at your plan and it looks so intense and all this traveling, but we know what, 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 how the flow feels best. Okay. And, um, we have a great team. We have a really fantastic team of people who support us so much and I feel like actually we are all supporting it. You know, we're all having different roles in this, in this uh, circle that the center is actually empty and we're just kind of like, wow. Oh. Um, and... Uh, we don't have a vision. I mean, I don't have a vision. Like some people say, oh, what's your five-year plan? Or where do you want to go with this? So I've never had that. I, c I just can't get my head around it. It doesn't come naturally. And uh, I also feel I'm not imaginative enough to have a vision because I think I would limit it to something that is way smaller than it could be because this is way smaller than I thought it could ever be. Mm -hmm. So I think it's... Um, healthy for me to just stay in this moment space mm. and also be ready you know if if it doesn't feel right to travel now we've been doing it for 23 years i think 25 years now um i have to i love it so much but i have to still keep myself like okay if it does change you know stay open to that you know like mm. let let go of it when you need to mm -hmm. And especially also in the tense age, like make sure that he that's it's still in the flow for him too, and you know that that we both do what we feel right in our life right now, and uh, yeah, so it's so so far so great. So I imagine on your on your journeys, you are almost always in contact with quite open-minded people. Mm -hmm. mm. So. It, you're watching news or something like this, so you're connected with what's happening in the world. Does it uh, somehow um, influence you, your work? You <laughs> said shut us up. <laughs> shut us up. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, the, you know, I mean, you cannot, you cannot, uh, dismiss what's happening in the world. Uh, you cannot dismiss the pain that people are going through and, and the poor refugees everywhere and the poor people in Africa and everywhere there's pain and there's trouble and there's aggression and war and starvation and it's only going to get worse, you know. So 
that's what we were talking about earlier. What, what is our place in this? Your place, my place, you know? And we're, we just... Um, for me, it's like we're on a... a we're, the life is a wave. It's like a big wave that we're all... We're all little droplets. And we're, there's no way you can... Another droplet is going to stop the wave. It's just happening. And uh, what we can do is to make our immediate uh, uh, reality, uh, circle or reality, as beautiful as possible. That's what you do. You inspire people so that they feel that just that tiny little gathering, whether it's a thousand or two hundred or whatever, it's it's. Uh, it's all we have. So let's do that. Let's just make the world a better place uh, in our immediate vicinity. Whether so, Deva and I go to Russia, we make that little crowd, uh, you know, um, um, we share beauty and love and voices. And then we go somewhere else. So our family is, is global. And uh, and that is is uh, uh, that seems to be our destiny. You know, mm, it's like strengthening. I mean, that's what we do. We we strengthen the light mm. of the, the of this balance on this planet. And of course, I don't really read the news that much. But of course, I'm aware of definitely aware of the turmoil and uh, and like I, I donate when I can to the catastrophes and we we, we uh, go to places where like 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 a few years ago when it was so intense in Kiev you know people cancel their concerts but we went anyway and did the concert and things like that where we can you know somehow bring some upliftment or it's or the other day. Yeah. It's very amazing when you play to those people who are just in it, you know. Tenderness. Yeah. You feel like the, the, you'd be sitting in front of a couple of thousand people and you'd feel tender. You'd feel this fragility. And, and then the voices and the joy of being in the moment and singing. That's, that's what it was like in Brussels, in Paris. Or we, we, when we get the opportunity, we've played in prisons or in... Um, just last week we played in a in a kind of a like a like a house for homeless um, mentally ill people who had who had found shelter in this house and and these moments I feel very precious when we are invited in a, in an intense situation like this and then to see that that we can contribute something to yeah. this and actually often the the connection is even more deep, you know, because it doesn't happen so often there, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is what Miten means, like in our immediate little thing, we can bring peace and love mm -hmm. for an hour to 20 people maybe in that facility or, or, or in a concert with some more people. But uh, it's, it's, uh, it's always that thing, like where do, do you, if you are not totally in the news, if you don't follow the news, do you put your head in the sand and you, you know, like I've asked myself, because actually I live in this bubble of heaven. I live in heaven, really, on earth. I'm only connected with loving people. I have enough to eat. I can eat whatever I want. I can... I can pretty much go wherever I want. I live in freedom. I mean, I, I don't actually, if I didn't read the news, I wouldn't even have noticed anything yet. You know, that basically. And, uh, and it's this, you know, this line of, do I just focus on that, what I have? Do I, do I uh, look out there and help? And I, I feel I do a bit, a bit of both, actually. You know, I, I don't only um, get distraught by by diving too much into things that I can't actually um, mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. And when it when I when it comes to me and when it touches me, I do whatever I can to to help, mm -hmm. you know. So we just have to find our balance with that. I think it's one of those existential 
questions, you know, this dance, this balance. Mm. What I really love it, uh, with your work is uh, it's synchronizing people, you know, it's synchronizing heart and mind, because uh, suddenly thousand minds are starting to think something what uh, almost nobody's understanding, but it's like one yes. one intention in the room, you know, and it it's very nourishing for yeah. me to mm. feel this, yeah. especially in these times, mm. you know. Yeah, that's what music can do. It, it, it can go to that place where you synchronize very fast, so then you can move. In well, that it's that connection again, it's mm. because then we feel connected. Mm. So one last personal question, because you are traveling so much, um, what are you doing to keep your body fit, you, you keep yourself fit? What's the secret? Uh, do you have a kind of integral life practice each day? Uh, I think we have to just answer that separately. <laughs> 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 Actually, when we're on the road, when we're on tour, um, it's very difficult to keep, mm -hmm. to keep any discipline. Mm -hmm. We try to shake every morning, but even that's difficult sometimes on, the, on tour because we are every two days in a different place. So we're constantly either traveling, packing, or getting ready for the concert or something. So that's maybe three months of the year where I hardly do anything. But we do, every day we do, um, we also wrote about it in the book, we do oil pulling, which is this where you have the, the oil for in the mouth for 10 to 20 minutes and it supposedly takes out the toxins of your body. And we've been doing it for 10 years and it makes us feel obviously good because we're very healthy. And we every day we drink lemon water in the morning. So on the travels, you know, the organizer knows they need a lemon a day each in the, in the hotel room. <laughs> and... Uh, plus apple cider vinegar, which is also really good. And um, and then when we are longer in a place, then I just like to do a kind of a mix of Pilates, more Pilates than yoga, but it's kind of a mix of Pilates and yoga. And in Australia, we actually both have a personal trainer and we have somebody who really uh, gets us going and sweating and stuff. That's good. That's good. Even the tennis. Yeah, no, I mean, I... I <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I used to be, uh, when I was a kid, yeah, I, was a, I was really <laughs> into football and I played, you know, and a lot. And uh, I'm, I'm into keeping my body good. But I do feel like uh, it's true. When, when we're in one place, like in Australia, where we stay for four months, it's much easier. Then we, we can, you know, we empty the suitcases and we're down and that's it. And then it's easier, but it's true in when we're traveling. It, but even the shaking, even if it's just a little shake, is also good, mm. you know. Shaking is really great. I, I, I mean, feel like the whole world should know about shaking. Well, maybe we should say something because shaking mm. is, uh, um, it's it's a it's a very good thing to do when you wake up in the morning, and and uh, it's a, it's a, there's a way to do it that helps too and that is that you begin consciously to unlock all the places all the joints where you tend to hold energy so you know like you shake with your knees relaxed not str not held but relaxed and your pelvic area and your shoulders and you consciously start in, in your jaw usually you know if we hold energy we hold it there so to open the mouth and to loosen the shoulders, the neck, and um, and to you know we have music the fifteen minutes to to uh, to to shake with that music for fifteen minutes. You mean from from the Kundalini? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Kundalini mm -hmm. is great, yeah. and um, and then you know yeah if sometimes sometimes it's possible, but but. Um, it's not just about the the physicality of it. it there is something very uh, refreshing mm. about moving. Mm. Uh, we, we we're not because we don't have a home anywhere. We're not out on the road. We're not out on the road. We're on the road. So you know, there's we're no. 
from we're not away from anywhere so in that way you 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 get to a point where you realize you have a choice to feel homeless or to feel at home wherever you are you know and i think that's a feeling it's like being a global citizen that's what we are we we're all over every, for 25 years now so we we've, we've we never we haven't looked back in that time so i think that's really it's not for everybody but it suits us and i think that's part of why we like Dave was saying, we only do what we want to do. We like to move. We like, we like to be in different hotels, I guess, and we like to wake up in a different town. And I like to wake up and not know where, where I am. Mm. Like that for a moment, it's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And things like that. And it just keeps everything, you know, um, it's good to, to keep that kind of looseness in your life, I think, because it, 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 uh, it gives juice to the whole thing, and uh, and and you know it it in our case it keeps us playful. It keeps seriousness at bay. We don't, you know, we're not so serious because you can get serious, and then when you get locked into seriousness, you're in an addiction. You know, it's hard to get out. So seriousness is not a good idea. Sincerity is a much better way of looking at it. And uh, we live there somehow. And I think that's, that helps us to, because we're playing to people who come, we have a responsibility to be really real. That's what the people, that's what we're all together. Nobody's coming to see a performance. It might look like that to some people. We, you know, we like to make sure that the stage looks beautiful and, you know, that it, that, and the music is good, the sound is good. We have very good technicians so that the lighting is beautiful and the sound is beautiful and stage looks beautiful. And uh, that's, that's what, that's our responsibility and all that helps us with the traveling so far. I think once he, if we get to, you know, we will respond to, like David said, you know, I am getting to a point where, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, we'll be asking myself, can I keep doing it? You know, but right now, uh, when I compare the, the staying in one place or being on the road and doing some good in the world, then I think that I should just do what I can do to, to, to if this is uh, doing some good in the world for me to travel, then that's so be it, you know. And that David loves to do it. That was another, you know, that we didn't plan that either. She just loves to travel like me. Not attached. Last question. If God would visit you this night, she, he, it, mm -hmm. and would say you have one wish for free, for granted. Uh, I'll just be silent. Oh, I had a wishing tree. I asked for one wish. I could have had three, but I only asked for what I needed. I could have asked for money, riches and wealth But all I really wanted was to find myself As unaccustomed as I was to seeking And my heart whispered inside and the moon rose and the angels sighed and they said here comes your second chance you better believe it open up and receive it here comes your second 
sense. Take a deep breath. This is your second chance. <laughs> Let's see how answer to your question, I think. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very you much, Reed. Mm. Nice to meet you, man. Thank mm. you for coming. Really nice to hang with you. So good. Mm -hmm. <laughs>